What's going on? Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, welcome. Just let everybody get in here. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. So today we're going to talk a little bit, I'm going to do a live on electroculture and talk about electroculture and everything about electroculture today. And I got a whole bunch of topics that I'm going to talk about with the electroculture. So if you're into gardening, growing your own food or any of that, this is going to be the one for you. And if you have any questions or anything about any of our products or anything, just throw them in the, in the bottom and then I'll also answer those as well too. But as for our, the Shilda Shot, we actually have something new coming out with Shilda Shot soon, which I'm really excited to launch. And it's going to be very easy to travel with. And it's going to be a new cold pressed formula that's very exciting as well, too. So I will be saving this live and it will go up on Instagram. It will go up on Rumble and it'll also go up on YouTube. I've been putting every, all of our videos on everything because YouTube doesn't censor anymore, I think, because they lost so many people. And then I also put everything up on Rumble as well, too. So it'll all be there. It'll all be saved. But today we'll be talking about electroculture. And I think this is a really important one because with all of the nonsense and the food shortages and all these pre-planned things that they try to do to us with that, we're going to we're gonna have a little counter towards that. So first and foremost, with the food shortages, when they were doing all of this and saying we're running out of food, they were actually holding food in warehouses and basically not putting it into the grocery stores to make it look like we were running out of food, but we're not running out of food. So basically they're flipping it so that they could, you know, basically try to push the agenda that we're running out so that it would cause people to go into fear and they use those fear frequencies to basically manipulate us into doing things that they maybe want us to do. So just like we're running out of, you know, everything else, supposedly we weren't really running out of those things. So with electric culture, the what we can do is we can utilize the earth's energy to heal right so to heal our i'm sorry to grow more food so what happens is is you're basically harnessing the earth's energy so that we can increase our yields right so for example what happens is we have energy all around us that's being impacted and changed by all of the cell phone towers and all of these radio radio waves that are around us and, and different cellular uh, frequencies that are around us as well too those are basically changing the waves and so with electroculture, what we can do is we can harness the Earth's energy. So what we do is we create antennas that look like wooden antennas with copper that are spiraling around in a vortex to increase the magnetism of the Earth. So what you do is you take these wooden copper antennas and just like this, you have copper just like this, and you wrap it around an antenna and you place those into different spots on your soil. And what you'll start to notice is that your plants will start growing faster, they'll start blooming quicker, they'll produce more food, they'll produce more fruit. And that's the magic of electric culture. The stuff was hidden from us for a long time because it competes with the pesticide and fertilizer company. Now with those food shortages, there's also, if you've noticed, they've talked about fertilizer and pesticide shortages as well too. Now, because of that, they're trying to basically show us that that stuff's running out, but we can just be using electric culture. Electric culture was used without pesticides, without fertilizers. So they would build these copper-like antennas or clay antennas, or you could use quartz and PVC pipes. You can work, you can use so many different things because basically what you're doing is you're making little antennas and placing them in the dirt to harness the energy that's around us. And it's all around us. That's what Wilhelm Reich was all about. He was about orgone and talking about the energy that's all around us. That's why when people get into, for example, breath work, they start increasing their energy and vitality because they're bringing in more energy to their body and the energy or chi that's surrounding us is around us all the time and we're now inhaling that and bringing that oxygen into back into the body. And that's what happens is when we get fatigued, we're tired, we need more oxygen, we need more energy, right? So the same thing works for these beautiful plants outside, you know, all of these trees and bushes and everything. Basically their sap that is basically spiraling up the plant starts to not move as much. And since it doesn't move as much, then the plant is not getting the nutrients delivered to the rest of the plant. So what happens is, is when you build these either copper antennas with wood or copper pyramids, you can also do copper pyramids as well, but when you build these and you place these into your soil, you can then increase your yields. You can grow more food. And it's a very simple solution. You can 
try any way you want. Just make yourself a wood and copper antenna, or you can do wood and brass and place them into your soil and you will start to notice you'll start growing more food. And if you need to even increase the magnetism some more, you can look into basalt and volcanic ashes because what you're doing is you're taking a magnetic substance or a magnetic clay, putting it into the dirt to increase the magnetism so that you can grow more food. What happens is, is with the pesticides and all of the uh, radiation that we're bombarded with, it's basically destroying the soil and drying it out so that people start to yield less food over time because of the magnetism is depleting. So think about it as like, you know, back in the day, you know, with the Dust Bowl and how like the, the soil was pretty much falling apart. Reason being is because number one, they were using iron tools, but number two, the, the energy that's disrupting everything, the radio waves and all of these things. So that's where electroculture can come and help heal the body. So with the electroculture, talk a little bit about Victor Schauberger. Victor Schauberger was understanding that if you use copper in the soil, you could yield more food. And he presented this to the government of Belgium, I believe. I think, believe that was who it's government or Belgium or, or government of Bulgaria. And basically he would understand that if you used copper in the soil, you would not change the magnetism of the soil. When we use iron in the soil, we actually deplete the magnetism and then that leads to drought-like conditions. So the dirt, for example, starts to get dried up because what's happening is, is you're depleting all the life energy out of the soil so that the soil is now basically becoming lifeless. And that's what he understood. So he basically announced to the, to the government, let me produce some copper tools and we can use those so we can all get a lot of food. And what happened was, was the government at that time said, I have a deal with the pesticide and fertilizer company and we can't do that. So they arranged all the farmers to basically, basically like get them all to, to get them all together and basically tell them if they use these copper tools, they're going to have too much food and that copper is going to yield them too much food and then they're going to lose money. So the, the farmers at that time stuck to iron tools, even though the iron tools make you work harder and diminish your yields at the same time. And it was interesting because Victor Schauberger created a copper shovel and basically he showed like if you had two shovels like this, like an iron shovel and a copper shovel, and you put the iron shovel into the soil, you have to work two times as hard to put it into the soil. The copper shovel basically slide right into the dirt. So we don't have to work as hard when we're using copper to, to, to uh, garden. You know, so it was very, very fascinating. And all of these things can be done. It's very, very simple. You know, these are simple solutions. And I talk about this because the biggest thing you can do is grow your own food, right? Because then you know where it's coming from. You know what you're putting into your body. You know the source. You know how it's grown. You know, you start to connect with nature. When we go to the grocery store and we're buying these foods that are shipped from 2,000 miles away and maybe sprayed or put in a truck or whatever else, we don't know what it's gone through. We don't know what the soil looks like. We're not connected to it. When you're gardening, you're actually connecting with your, your frequency, basically, of your body. You're, you're connecting into the, into the plant. So a lot of people used to take seeds and they used to put them in their mouth and basically they would then take them out of their mouth and plant them into the earth so that the seed, when it was planted, it would have an imprinted DNA on it to recognize the person. There's a copper museum in Clarksdale. Really? I didn't even know that. I'm gonna have to go check that out. Clarksdale is awesome, by the way. Um, it's awesome. That's that's. I went to Clarkdale and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's actually a place that I maybe want to move to. But um, with that, um, so with that, they they basically took the seed and they would put it into the dirt and it would imprint on the DNA and the DNA would be on the on the plant when it grew and it blew and basically blew up and then when it basically would when the person would be next to it they would the plant would pick up on the person and then it would have that connection and that's why well, like when you say positive things to your plants or if you're connected to your plants and show them love they will grow and they will basically get better and better versus if you bring negativity anger and all your emotions and bring it out on the plant the plant can pick up on these things and that's why so we are so like plants right because because when you look at trees, for example, this tree outside, all the trees communicate between each other. And it's really interesting because they start to communicate when there's pests around, they start to communicate when there's insects, when there's different things going on, they will send out signals and plants are aware of this. So basically if you look at a plant, it's like one gigantic antenna that's deep rooted its roots into the earth. And that's where, like I was talking about the benefits of electric culture is you can help these plants and you can make our plants healthier and then grow more food and have more nutrients because that's the other thing. So with the copper, right? So we're gonna talk more about copper as well too, but with copper, George Lukowski, 
he was another guy who was big on copper. And I'm going through each person who was big on copper because copper doesn't get as much credit as it should because it's such a healing metal. It's a phenomenal metal for healing the body. So George Lukowski, if you look into him, he created the multi-wave oscillator. And it was basically a device in which you would sit in for 15 minutes and it would pulse a high frequency next to you. It had copper and brass and silver and zinc and all the different things. And it would pulse a frequency and it would begin to heal you. And this device pretty much healed every single illness, what's, what, what, whatever you can think of. Now, he also created a copper belt, right? So if you're ever suffering from digestion issues, you can take a piece of copper wire and if it's coated with plastic, that's fine, and put it around your waist and it'll begin to improve your digestion and improve your energy. Because what it's doing is it's, inc it's protecting you and increasing the magnetism of your organs to basically make that blood move. So it starts to heal. So what he noticed was, was he created a copper coil, which was called the George Lukowski coil. And that coil was basically put around plants that were basically having like a little tumor. And that what he noticed was, was in, I think within seven to 14 days, those tumors basically started to fall off. And he noticed if he just wraps this copper coil around the plants, that they will start to heal. And that was it. And then not only did the tumors fall off the plants, which was very fascinating to him, because it was just a piece of copper. It was nothing, anything special. It's very simple, cost you $5, um, you know, and he basically wrapped these around the plants and they started growing three times the size. His planted pots, which he had that were like this big, the ones with the copper coil that he created, the, the Lakovsky coil, were like eight times the size versus the ones that were over here that didn't have the copper were like still the exact same size. And I've been sent a ton of videos on social media of everybody's gardens and even my plants. My Moringa plant was a Moringa plant that started at the pot. It's now like 10 or 12 feet tall on the balcony. And the Moringa pods went from, the average Moringa pod is six to eight inches. And my Moringa pods were 22 inches. So it's a tremendous jump of how much how much larger our food used to be. And it was interesting because if we go back to even Victor Schauberger, he noticed that when you use copper tools in the soil, that your potatoes would turn about three to four times the size of the potatoes you have now. So imagine you go to the grocery store about a potatoes about this big. Now imagine if you were harvesting potatoes that are maybe about two feet long. That's basically what they started to notice with the use of copper. So George Lukowski was big into it. Victor Schauberg was big into it. Victor Schauberger also created the bio plow, which was a plow that basically, because of the way that it was, um, because of the way that it was created, it was like a mole or like a shark going through the soil. And basically it would cut through without using any resistance or it didn't have any resistance whatsoever. So when it would go through the soil, it would pretty much just glide right through, which is interesting because think of our iron plows the way that they're designed, they're kind of like straight like that. And they, if you, if they got pulled with a tractor or with a, with a horse, whatever it is, they have to work like two times harder because they're designed like this versus these, the, the, the bio plow was created so that it was like a, a shark or like a mole and it would cut right through the dirt. So it's interesting because Victor Schauberger understood if we respect nature and we mimic nature, we will work together with nature. And it's just, that's what we have to do. We have to understand that we can't use the synthetic pesticides, synthetic fertilizers, synthetic chemicals, and expect to have healthy food. You know, how can you go, for example, to the grocery store, if your grocery store's food is sprayed with over 2000 pesticides, how is that gonna give you life, right? And it's interesting because glyphosate, for example, the number one most common sprayed pesticide on anything was patented as an antibiotic. So because it was patented as an antibiotic, it's an anti-life product. It's taking the life out of the food. So, and then it's sold at the grocery store and uh, for consumers. So when you look at this, all of these things are pulling the life force, the chi, the prana, the energy, the beautiful parts of, the, of, of nature. It's pulling that out and stripping that and then leaving you with this toxic sludge or toxic food. And that's why when we start to use electroculture, on the other hand, we don't need to use pesticides. We don't need to use fertilizers. And we, we just harness the energy of the earth because it's all around us. This, this energy is all around us all the time and we just are not picking up on it. I mean, we're still using cars. Like I look at these cars right now, they got 20 miles to the gallon in 2022. I mean, they created cars that could get 300 miles to the gallon in the 1970s. They had cars that ran on water in the 1970s. They had, 
Tesla Free Energy, he created a car in the 1943 that ran off the Earth's energy and basically would harness the Earth's energy and be able to drive completely for free. All of this stuff has been suppressed and it's been hidden from us and that's part of the whole electric culture movement too. The pesticide companies like Monsanto and DuPont and all of these people who are trying to poison us with their food, basically they were culprits to blocking a lot of this information. All of the electric culture information was deleted after about 1940s and 1950s. All of a sudden all the books, all the things, all everything started to disappear. Just like when you look at Wilhelm Reich's work and all of his orgone energy work and all of the things he created, all of his stuff started to disappear shortly after um, after his death and it just all the information was burned. So it's important when we look at these things, when we're trying to learn something, to really look at the stuff that's been removed and wonder why it's been removed. Because usually the stuff that's been removed is the most important for us to learn about because we just don't, we're just not taught about it or because they want it to be suppressed or hidden so that we don't have access to this knowledge. But that's why I'm such a believer and we need to grow our own food and reconnect. Because also too, once you reconnect with nature, you can take all the EMF and radiation that's sitting on your body all the time, right? When we're using these devices and we're in places with all this pinging stuff that's pinging all the time, 24 seven, it's causing a electrostatic buildup. And that's why I was talking about yesterday, even with the linen sheets, about how it's important to sleep in linen sheets because when you're sleeping in linen sheets, you can't build up a electrostatic buildup because there's no static that can be held. Versus when you sleep in polyester sheets, you're building up static on your body leading to restless leg syndrome. And that's why people can't relax because their legs have so much static built up on them, they gotta keep moving and keep jiggling kind of like that. And you see that with babies too. You know, little babies or whatever, they always are wiggling their feet and whatever. Reason being is because they're sleeping mostly probably on some polyester or whatever it may be, and then that causes them to get the the, uh, the electrostatic buildup. Is cotton good? Cotton is great, um, but just the thing is with cotton, you're going to get really warm, right? Really, 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 really warm. So that's the other issue too as well. You're going to get really toasty. First, linen is very cooling. And if you're going to go in the wintertime, you could do wool because wool is the opposite frequency of linen and it's also very healing. And we're meant to pretty much rotate between those two materials because if we're looking at uh, the static that's all around us, it's important to rotate between those two because they're very natural. So next we have uh, Justin Cristo Flow and all of his work. So Justin Cristo Flow, I put up his book, which is very, very fascinating. It was about electric culture and it's on our blog as well too. But basically he was creating antennas and he was growing massive potatoes, pumpkins, beets, anything you can think of. And he was basically demonized because of the fact that he was going against the pesticide company and the fertilizer company. He basically proved that we don't need pesticides, we don't need fertilizers, we don't need chemicals. And they didn't like any of that so they burned his book and there's the PDF we have online. But he was creating really cool antennas with like you know, different types of like basically triangles and different types of lines. And he started to notice that if you put the copper also through the dirt, you can harness the earth's energy as well that way too. So he would create all different types of grids, all different types of setups. And Justin Cristo Flow was like the first person with electric culture. Now there's people before that, but to create a book and show it, he was one of the first people. So one of my favorites as well too. And it's interesting because if we relate that into for example, like the whole DDT movement, right? So you got DDT came out in the 1950s, they were spraying it all over everything. DDT was affecting the birds, right? And this is where we go to another. So you have electric culture, which we're harnessing the earth's energy, and then now we're going into frequency and sound. So if you walk out and you produce a sound and your sound is beautiful to your plants, they will resonate with you and they will grow larger. If you yell at them, they will cower and they will basically start to die. So it's interesting because when the polio, or I'm sorry, DDT situation started to occur, they were spraying DDT all over. And it, what it was doing, it was harming people, it was leading to paralysis of people, but it was also harming the birds and the insects and the bees. And these things all resonate at a certain frequency to basically tell the plant to open up its roots and its leaves and everything about it so that it can absorb nutrients. So when they were spraying that DDT all over, it was harming the birds and killing off the birds, which that beautiful bird sound, it's just the most relaxing one ever. If you ever sit in the forest and you hear just birds chirping, it's very peaceful because they're using ultrasonics 
and that frequency is emitting to the plants. And because that frequency is emitting to the plants, it leads the plant to opening up its roots so that it will absorb more nutrients. And I thought this was interesting because basically when they were using this DDT, they also were rolling out a lot more chemicals. So they had World War II where they had all this abundance of chemicals and they basically had to use it on the people, against the people, and then they mass produce chemical farming and genetically modified seeds and genetically modified foods, right? That's when that kind of all started. The GMO cow, which if we're gonna take it to another level, the GMO cow came out in the 1960s with the Holstein cow, you have the black and white cow. So if you're ever looking for the original cow, you wanna look for the Swiss cow when it comes down to it, if you're ever drinking raw milk. But the Holstein cow was actually genetically modified in the 1960s, which I didn't know until a couple months back. So they were doing gene altering back in the 1950s and 60s. We just were never told about it. They only made it public when, for example, in the 90s when Monsanto was talking about GMO corn, but they were doing a lot of gene editing back then. And then they, so, so they were making these Holstein cows, these, or these GMO cows, and then they were also putting out DDT and spraying pesticides, which was impacting the bird population. And the fact is, is that bird sounds basically increase plant growth. So what people started to notice was you could take a boom box and you could make plants, or I'm sorry, you could make birds chirp out of the boom box and you can spray a little bit of fermented wine on there and you'll start to notice that your plants will grow faster because what's happening is, is the sound effect is being played onto the plants and then the plants start to open up their leaves and they actually start to absorb more nutrients. And it was interesting because the lady who studied this in the 1950s and 60s, she started to notice that if she played classical music for her plants, they would start to resonate and the plants would grow towards the music. If she played rock and roll for the plants, the plants would start to die. So it's interesting because if you think of all the noise pollution and everything that we have going on, let's say outside, a lot of that actually impact, impacts our plants' lives as well too, but we just don't see it. And then also too, the music that we listen to, not only does it affect us and our brain, right? You see a lot of people that got Bluetooth and AirPods and all these things that are basically pulsing Wi-Fi into their brain. But you have that, which is a frequency, so that starts to impact us. That same frequency of the sound can also impact the plants. So they started noticing when you play classical music, the plants resonate at a beautiful frequency and they actually start to grow towards the plant. And that's what I thought was really interesting because I thought, hmm, well, if, if you can do that, then you can, you can grow even more. And these are all different tactics in which we can do to grow more food and have abundance. And that's the thing, like we're taught to have this scarcity mindset. I mean, everything I see on, for the most part, either on, if it's on social media or if it's whatever, it's fear, 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 fear. We have to resolve all this fear. We have abundance of everything. We have so much, we, we probably have so much we don't even know what to do with it. But we have to really resolve the fear and understand we can have an abundance of everything and they're going to try to use the media as they always do as fear to put us into a scarcity mindset so that they make us believe that we need to do what they want us to do. And that's the whole thing, even with the, you know, the food stuff and whatever else, they try to make it like everything's running out. There's an abundance, just like the oil thing. They're never running out of oil. There's so much oil, it's not even funny. It's an, it's a, it just comes out of the earth. All of these things come out of the earth. They just put price tags and they manipulate prices to try to make it look like things are running out. So it's just a, it's a mindset of trying to control your mind to make you believe that this is you know what's true and it's not you know if you look at for example the media it was taken over in the 1960s with operation mockingbird and that whole confiscation of the media so we really have to get ourselves out of that mindset and that's why i'm so adamant about bringing forth solutions all the time and if they're free that's the best part because i want people to implement these things and i've seen so many things with electroculture and people doing it and building antennas and their gardens are blooming and they got food i had a lady message me and i'm going to tell a quick story but i had a lady message me and she's a sweet soul she sent me a message and she basically said she 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 has a uh, it's like a butterfly like they like they like protect butterflies basically and she had butterflies basically when the butterfly is born it dies within, I guess, like, I guess 10, I guess 90% of butterflies die at, within like the first week of being born, which I never even knew that or any, had any clue, but they have memory and then they fly out to wherever they're going to go. But basically 90% would die every year. And she's been, they've been trying to protect these butterflies because they're trying to keep that, 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 that species alive and all of their species and whatever else. And she implemented electroculture 
into her butterfly aquarium, I'm going to call it a sanctuary, butterfly sanctuary, all of the butterflies have lived and not a single one has died. And I thought that was remarkable because when I was studying into pyramid energy, copper energy, all of these things that were basically suppressed and not told about, I also started to notice that if you take copper and you wrap it around a plant that is dead, it will come back to life. And I thought that that was mind blowing because that means that plants are not actually dead in the way in which we've been told. Maybe they just have to be awakened and come back. So then it makes you wonder, can things that weren't here come back? And it was interesting because when I was studying some of these Russians with their pyramids and the stuff that they were doing in Russia, they'd build these copper and fiberglass pyramids and put them all over the place and plants would start growing back that have not been there for like anywhere from 50 to 100 years. They've never even seen some of the plants that were actually starting to grow back. And it was completely mind blowing because obviously, you know, never, you know, the, you can't create you know, or destroy things or whatever else, but it was fascinating. So it makes me wonder, well, if you start harnessing the earth's energy, what will come back? I've noticed, for example, on my balcony, I've noticed bees. I got beetles. I have wasps. I have uh, little small bees. I have hummingbirds. I have every insect you could probably think of. I mean, I have birds, I have doves, I have pigeons, I have hawks, I have crows. I mean, any, anything you could think of comes to the balcony. And it's interesting because even if you look at the soil, even though it's a pot and it's just a planted pot, it had, I got ants, I have all these little, like, little baby spiders, jumping spiders, I got everything you could possibly think of. And a lot of people have messaged me that their gardens are the exact same way. They have bees coming back, they have all these things coming that weren't there anymore but somehow the animals and the insects can pick it up and it's basically their antennas. Their antennas pick up on infrared frequencies and basically UV frequencies and they vibrate at such a second that they can basically pick up on the energy that's coming out of that area and they'll start going there. So that's why if we use electroculture and we start harnessing this Earth's energy, we will have an abundance of food and we will have an abundance of a ecosystem, right? Because our ecosystem is definitely getting destroyed by all of this nonsense that they're trying to put out. And we can harness that and bring these things back to life and, and give, safe give it like a safe place, right? Like for bees, right? You want bees to basically come, you want bees to come around to your garden first because you need pollinators. But second, because the frequency of the bee is magical. This frequency, if you're ever surrounded by a bunch of bees, they're all, all emitting a 28 kilohertz, which is the same frequency as the top of a pyramid. And that's what causes them to be able to levitate because they basically are, it's a long story, but they have a lot of antennas in them and they can basically pick up on the frequencies. So it's very interesting because we can create these areas or even our backyard and basically re-energize that area, but also harmonize that area so that our plants can grow better. And then we'll also have more insects and everything else that's supposed to be there. So it's magical because this is what we need to do. And I always see it as these are baby steps and as we check off each one, right, like improving your house, getting rid of Wi-Fi, you know, cleaning up your diet, drinking, you know, purified water, distilled water, whatever, all of these things, eating superfoods, each and everything, changing your clothing, each and everything is a change that you start to check off, right? And it's like almost like a checklist. And as you check off each one, you're now helping your terrain and helping your home more than ever. You know, and someone said the sea turtles are migrating to the wrong spot because the poles have shifted. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. It's the it's the five G, right? And I'm just going to say it. it it's the five G. You, you're rolling out new forms of technology, and, and animals can't basically they can't adapt, right? So what happens is, is animals and insects also have. If you look at it, they got little they got magnets in their brain, and their magnets are what pick up on which way they're supposed to go. And I was going to go into that next, which is funny, but basically, so birds. Okay, so. Think about a bird, right? So when the bird goes up in the air, it starts to spiral in a vortex, right? It starts to spin in a circle, just kind of like this. And what they're doing is they're picking up on the magnetic ley lines so that they know exactly which direction to go. They're also creating vortexes at the same time underneath their wings and through their feathers to basically pick up on the magnetic ley lines that are inside the earth. So those turtles that you were just talking about are basically getting confused because they also have the same magnetite or crystalline structure inside the brain that causes confusion for them not to know where to go because when you're beaming all these goofy frequencies on the ocean, right? They want to bring the they want to bring the internet into the ocean, which is just completely insane to even think. But when you're beaming all of these frequencies into the ocean and all of the surrounding areas, the turtles get confused because they don't know which direction to go. 
it's similar to like when you see a dog and the dog is going to use the bathroom. And it's fascinating because when you think about why would a dog, for example, spin in a circle before using the bathroom? It seems really silly, right? But they're picking up on the magnetic ley lines in which way to go. And that's the whole reason that a dog spins in a circle before it uses the bathroom. So all of these animals have these different magnetic pathways that they pick up on things. And then if you have insects, it goes by migration as well too. So, you know, it's fascinating because insects will go based on the same thing, picking up on the frequencies that they can pick up in their brain. What if the sound is harmonious, but it's coming from a device putting out a disharmonious frequency like a phone? So if it, so the thing is, is, and that's the thing, so with the phones, they change the frequency, like you're not hearing my pure voice, right? Like if we were all in a room and you heard my pure voice, or your pure voice, I heard yours, then it would be a completely different frequency in which I'm hearing than registering through these devices. And that's the problem with these devices is they can manipulate the frequency or the sound that's coming out and give you a different form, like 440 hertz, right? Like, so you have 440 hertz music, that's what that is. It's the different key of A, so it actually causes headaches, it causes confusion, it causes anxiety, it causes people to get angry. So that's the thing is with these devices, the problem with a lot of this is that you're not getting the pure sound and also too, when you're trying to like put on headphones, it was always very hard for me to find, for example, headphones that actually sounded like what it should sound like, right? That was always the hardest part because nothing mimics my ear. And I noticed when I stopped using headphones, like going to the gym and whatever else, I can hear so much better. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because these, these devices are actually disabling our senses and we're not realizing it. It's kind of like how the blue light impacts our eyes and then our eyes cannot register as well because they start to get damaged. It's similar like that, all of the frequencies that come off the device can actually impact our health and that's why you have to take different steps to you know, either, either keep yourself protected or turn on the black and white or register different things. You can look back at like, I think vinyl records, you could look back at like certain things like the old, the, in the 1930s and 1920s, they had different types of instruments. Like if you want to hear the real frequency, you have to go back to that time of those types of things being created. Because I was reading the other day that the Rockefellers bought out the musical industry in like the 1930s and 40s and changed all of the different tunes so that they could make it all to 440 hertz. You know, so a lot of these, we're having a, a switch of manipulation and it's basically changing the frequency that was very natural to us and same with the earth, right? When we're putting all these goofy towers all over the place and these LED lights with cameras in them and everything else, it's starting to impact plants. I mean, I've seen plants when they're under an LED light, they start to die very quickly because it's too much blue light. It's not a full spectrum, it's not the sun. You know, and same thing when they put the stuff up in the air and they supposedly, you know, dimming the sun, same thing, they're impacting that natural rays. I mean, how about this? Let's take it to another point of frequency. When I go out to go sun gaze and I go to look at the sunset or the sunrise, why is there always these hue of clouds always sitting exactly at the sunset and always exactly at the sunrise? Because that is the most healing time in which we can get the red light spectrum into our eyes. So they don't really have to put clouds, in my opinion, into the air as long as they put clouds, for example, at the sunset or the sunrise, because both of those don't allow you to get those beautiful red rays which decalcify this beautiful penile gland up in our brain. You know, so it's, it's, we have a lot of inversion of things and changing and it's interesting when you look at all of these things because they've thought out of all of these things but we have to take our steps and take our actions to basically reverse these things, right? And that, that's what it is and that's why like even doing these lives and putting up videos and content and, and everybody engaging and be able to talk and communicate and everything else and send each other messages and whatever else. That's what we have to do because when we group together and we unite in a very positive manner, that resonates on a higher frequency than the fear-based frequency they try to put out, right? They have to work so hard. I mean, think about this. The media has to put billions of dollars into fear, right? Fear, 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 because that frequency is trying to penetrate into our brain which in reality, when we resonate on a positive level, we bring positivity all over the place and it's pretty much, you can feel it, right? When a group of people are in a room and they're all positive and they're all bringing it all together, you can feel that energy, you know? And that's the magic. And even through these devices, I've seen with, there's a documentary called Becoming Superhuman where they were showing where people were sending their frequency and their aura, their essence through the phone into a glass of water. 
I mean, that's the power that we all possess. We just have to look at these things. And yes, kidneys are the most affected organ in the radio wave pollution. Yes, so kidneys are heavily impacted. And same with the plants. You know, going back to the electroculture, the plants are impacted too because you can see it, right? You got one half of the plant that's cooked and you got one half of the plant that's living. You can see the one half that's cooked is the part that's receiving the radio wave pollution or radio or radio pollution, EMF, whichever word you'd like to call it. You know, so, and that's the thing is, we need to create awareness because when you create awareness and you share and you bring forth awareness, it brings change. Because for example, if people understand, for example, that they have a smart meter out there outside their house and it's pulsing EMF frequencies like no other, right? Then what's happening is if you live next to them, it's also pulsing you. But if you bring awareness to your neighbor and tell them, let me show you a little document and explain what this is actually doing, well, then that person can get rid of theirs, this person can get rid of theirs, and multiple people can start opting out. And as people do these things and these little changes, you start to create and change the way in which they try to manipulate us. Next is obviously moving into free energy and doing all of those things as well too, but we really have to start with our food, right? What we put in our body, whether it's an organic food that we have grown or a superfood, you know, such as like I was explaining with all the stuff that we also have with Shilajah, Pearl Powder, Dragon's Blood, all those things as well too. The thing is, is as we change this beautiful temple and we strengthen that, we can then help strengthen other people, right? Because that's the only way, like I can sit here and preach a billion things, but it, people have to be healthy first because once people are healthy, they have the power, the energy, right? I can feel it in my fist right now. You have the power, the energy to then help other people and guide them. And that's what we saw during 2020 and 2021 is a lot of people waking up to the nonsense or the tyranny that they're trying to do. And today they, it was interesting because today they announced that it's all over and everything's good, everything's back to normal. It's like you literally put everybody through a mass experiment for the last two, three years and everything's cool. Like we should forget that you literally told people not to hug their own grandmother. So it's like, we have to be aware of these things too, but we have to use that energy that I just was emitting in a positive way because they want us to use it in a negative way and they want us to be crazy. Yes, they're copper rings. Somebody was asking about the rings. Yeah, they're just copper. And then I, I do different types of metals. Like I do uh, gold on my neck and then sterling silver on my neck. I test out different metals because each different metal has a different frequency. And that relates also on the electroculture thing as well too. If you use brass or copper in your soil, you'll start to notice that your plants will do better because the brass has a combination of copper and zinc, which works like a battery. So when we're wearing these different types of metals on our neck, we're also emitting certain frequencies, just like if you wear certain crystals, right? If a person is wearing like an opal or like a malachite or just different types of crystals or different types of enter, different types of stones or a garnet, those stones will emit certain frequencies. Shungite is another one. Yes, somebody just mentioned it. So Shungite is another one. You wear these crystals on your neck and what's happening is it's radiating on your heart, which is in basically a gigantic electromagnetic frequency machine. That's the best way to say it. So the thing is, is when we're wearing these different metals and these di different crystals and these different things, we're basically taking in a new frequency, right? So like if you're feeling off, it could be because you might need some gold in your life. Reason being is because gold is uplifting, energetic, it powers you up. It's the power of the sun. Right? And now if you're feeling you wanna be focused and you wanna get your mental clarity, then you look at something like silver, right? Because silver is the energy of the moon and it's very healing for the brain. It's also very healing for, the, uh, for your third eye and your crown chakra as well too. So silver is very strong on that. You can look at copper, which is very balancing and it increases magnetism of the body. If you come across Twisted Sage, yes, Twisted Sage is a beautiful human being who creates a lot of wonderful, different, awesome, stuff. I mean, I, I've known him for years. I think it's now been, goodness to think back, it's been like five years or six years, but I actually have some crazy stories I could tell you about all of Twisted Sage's stuff and all of his beautiful works of art and his tensor rings and all of those. And tensor rings are very healing too as well. Rose gold is gold, silver, and copper. Yes, which is a great combination. You could also do white gold as well too. White gold is, is gold and zinc. So you have those two basically uplifting energies. If you want a lot of energy, white gold would be the highest because zinc is pretty much the essence, one of the essences of energy. And this kind of goes into alchemy. 
in all of that realm as well too, but crystals as well, quartz. You can wear quartz, you can squeeze that quartz and it'll actually start to produce a piezoelectric effect, which will produce energy, which will also create a bubble around your body as well too. So if you have a piece of quartz you put in your hand, you can squeeze it right by, right by the thyroid, I'm sorry, right by your throat and by the heart chakra, and that will actually create an electric effect right here to actually enhance the energy. Platinum is another one. Yes, platinum is very uplifting and energetic, very strong, very durable. Uh, you have iron as well too. That's another one too for red blood cells. And it's interesting because when you look at these, specifically today, have you noticed energy? Yeah, energy is like through the roof today. I think that's just uh, what's going on. I feel like they haven't been putting a lot of nonsense in the air. So I feel like the energy is really high because whenever they don't put their little magic powders up in the air, the energy's through the roof because there's so much orgone and so much energy flowing around us all the time. So that's that's a really big thing. But with the crystals, when we we're going with that, with quartz, right, those create piezoelectric effects. And if you squeeze them, they will actually create energy bubbles around you. So quartz is really cool too. You know, there's all these different stones. And if you look into like the crystals world and everything, basically what happens is, is you're basically putting something near your body that has a different design, right? So it might look like a pyramid. If you zoom in real close and you had a microscope on a crystal, you can see all the little structures on it. And when you're bringing in these different things, these different things can be very healing. So like tourmaline, right? Tourmaline is a great one for protecting the body from radiation, right? If you look at tourmaline, it's black tourmaline. It's interesting because if you look at the structure of tourmaline, it's actually a pyramid. It's like a little pyramids, a bunch of them. And what do pyramids do? Create little, basically like orbs or vortexes or little spirals to protect you. So you basically, when you wear black tourmaline on your neck, you're protecting yourself also from the radiation that's around. You just have to make sure it's rare, I'm sorry, it's real and not fake, right? Because that's the problem with a lot of these things is sometimes you can pick up a crystal. If it's too smooth and it's been polished and everything else, it's probably, it's, it's, it, the energy has been moved from it. You wanna pick up raw stones, raw crystals, raw things because those raw things have been untouched and the energy or as somebody just said the spirit has not been dissolved in those crystals because what happens is is when they do all the polishing and they put the plastic coating and everything else they pretty much have diminished the energy or chi or prana whatever you'd like to call it so crystals are fascinating you know metals are fascinating and the thing is is a lot of it they just get bad reps right though we get a lot of stuff with you know, you're having too much of this, you're having too much of that, but it's like we're really getting poisoned with Teflon and all types of other types of things that shouldn't even be introduced. And same with aluminum, right? If we're gonna go into the aluminum spectrum, it's fascinating because there are uses of aluminum that actually can be beneficial for blocking radio waves and can block frequency from actually harming us. But we don't wanna be eating aluminum, but that's the differences. What happens is they flip it and they do that same thing. They did that with lead. Right, a lot of people when they were t somebody asked me the other day, but what do you think about lead paint? And I thought, well, that's an interesting one because let's go with this. Lead is also used in alchemy in the ancient day, and they would transmit lead into gold. Right, so you could turn lead into gold like that overnight. So that goes to show you the chemical properties and the, the resonance that comes from lead, even though it seems like it doesn't have that. All of these things have healing properties, but. In the 1950s and 60s, they put lead into gasoline so that when it burned, it would basically produce a toxin and then it would get emitted into the air and people would get sick, right? But if you put lead paint on the wall, you can block all the frequencies that we have being pulsed into our home. So it's interesting. So if you look over here, they banned it because it was being burned. But if it was used in this side, right, to protect us, it actually could be very useful in protecting us. Now, obviously, we could use different types of crystals and different types of things like that as well, too. Or you can look into building your house in certain, basically, um, like an orgone blanket, like somebody was mentioning down below, like an orgone blanket, like a sandwich. And it can be multiple layers to protect you from frequencies as well. But it's just always interesting because certain things get reps or bad reps, but they are existing in nature, right? There are things existing in nature. It's just what happens is, is the people who try to poison us, right? That's the best way to say it. They take that chemical and then put an abundance of it with a whole bunch of other chemicals in it. And then that's what messes us up. So for example, if we go to table salt, right? Table salt has aluminum in it. It also has fluoride in it. It also has, has arsenic and heavy metals in it. It also has talcum powder in it has tons of toxins in it. So when we go to consume that toxic fludge, it's basically messing us up. 
you know so we're not seeing the pure source of many things and that's the problem so that's why like even if for example with gold you're wearing the pure gold you're wearing the pure metal on you and that's the magic you'll start to vibrate at that same frequency and that's the same thing with the plants is if we take care of our plants and we do like i was talking about with the electric culture with that then we can start healing our plants as well too we also definitely shouldn't be applying aluminum to our skin and our anti yes of course yes so it's interesting with that right so you have the aluminum in the deodorant right so the aluminum was basically it blocks the ability for you to perspire which is the ability for you to detox heavy metals right so what they did was they used propylene glycol now instead of aluminum and propylene glycol is antifreeze so they took the aluminum out which was basically causing all different types of for example the lady parts cancer and it, basically that was what the aluminum was doing they took that out and they replaced it with antifreeze so now you have a different ingredient in there so that's why like you have to be aware of what you're using or what you're bringing in right every day you wake up and it's very very simple every day you wake up and you're like completely reset and it's up to you to determine what's going to go into your body whether you're going to drink it whether you're going to wash your body in it whether you're going to eat it whether you're going to sleep in it you know all of these things whether you're going to have the frequency of a light above you all of those things are your choice of what you're accepting or consenting into your body so it's important to be aware of this and yes interesting on the antifreeze so yeah they basically did a bait and switch of the aluminum for antifreeze so that's pretty much what it is and i think tom's got sued for like i don't know how many millions of dollars because of that and that's the problem too you got a lot of greenwashing right you have these companies that get bought out and then these companies get bought out and then there's these chemicals introduced into those brands because they're trying to cheapen the product and because those brands who are buying those companies out basically what they're doing is they're changing ingredients to cheap the cheapen the the, the the price of things and they're trying to poison the people who are trying to be healthy right because think about it, if you have a demographic of very healthy people you these people the way that they think is they think they can poison them and then make them uh, make money on a kickback on the other side so it's interesting because for example uh tom's was bought out there's the laura bar that was bought out rx bar was bought out they're all bought out by like kellogg's right you look at kellogg's who owns them and whatever rice krispie treats same company who creates rice krispie treats are buying out you know organic foods and things like that so it's important to be aware of these things because basically what's happening is is anytime you're buying from somebody you should know who owns the company right look up who owns the company like this it's so important to know before you walk into a store before you even pick up something on the shelf you have your phone at just your disposal you can literally just type it in and say who owns blah 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 whatever company it may be look them up because if you don't know and that's what i've noticed right there's a lot of stuff going on and there's always seeing things happening if i don't know who owns something then i need to be wary because who are they and how did they invest into that company and what are they behind and that's what i started to learn right if there's all of a sudden some company that comes out i need to know who they are and kind of right what i'm going to bring into my home because these companies are buying these companies out and then switching things up so that's why you know it's important that like i said we go back we'll go back to like i was saying the, the eating from what we grow and growing our own food because then we know what we're eating the problem is is with all these brands and everything else is they'll put one ingredient that's maybe say healthy and then they'll switch it with some other unhealthy ingredients too that's another issue so it's oh it's it's yeah it's a game all the time so what i've noticed is is you just start reducing less and less and less and less and less to where things and i i read this when i was like 21 years old you should have things that are five ingredients or less right and i remember learning that when i think i was like 21 or 22 when i was in the fitness world five ingredients or less because that's the simplest way to understand what you're putting into your body because it's rare that five ingredients are going to be all toxic but it's just five ingredients or less it just makes it easier so color caramel color gave me adh yeah so all the flavoring and the, the colors and the, the the things that they add in there all of the flavoring the red 40 red 60 yellow 5 all those things they're all linked to hyperactivity because the body cannot recognize what's being put into it so it will lead to adhd symptoms you know and the thing is is when you look at these for example companies they'll have like organic 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 and then like red 40 
And it's like, how do you how do you even put those in there and then put Red 40 when you know that those flavors and those colors and those different things are linked to health issues? You know, so it's just important to be aware of what you're putting on your body and then also what you're consuming. And the thing is, is you won't understand that it's impacting you until you get rid of it. Right. So that's another thing people can do. Start eliminating something and seeing how you feel. Once you eliminate something for, let's say, like a week or two weeks, and then you reintroduce it back into your world, you might notice, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't need to eat this or drink this or this doesn't need to be around me. It's kind of like the LED lights that I've been talking about. If you are not around LED lights, when you are around them, they're going to make you crazy. And you're going to feel the blue energy that's coming off of them that's pulsing like a strobe light the entire time. But if you're in LED lights, your senses are becoming numb. And that's what happens with people who are surrounded by fragrance, right? When people spray themselves with cologne and perfume and all these things, their taste buds and sense of smell become numb. The senses become turned off. So when they become turned off, they don't even realize that they're in poison. They don't even smell it anymore because the poison has already infiltrated into the nose to actually disable the senses that are in the nose so that they start to have... They don't even start to have symptoms. They're just like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I can't even smell it. But those poisons, the fragrance are always still there. So when you eliminate those fragrances or the lights or the LED lights as well too, when you eliminate these things for let's say two, three weeks and you are around them again, you might start coughing. You might start having like an allergic reaction. You might not be able to breathe. You might have hives, right? You might have all these reactions to these things because of the fact that you're reintroducing it back into your life. So same thing with the LED lights. If you get yourself a nice pair of just even $5 blue blockers and you put the black and white setting and, you're, and you keep yourself away from the LEDs and you switch to incandescence, you, can, you will notice such a difference in your lifestyle. You will sleep better, you will be more functional, your brain will be turned more on, you will, you will be more energetic because these LED lights that they're putting out on these street lights are to dim our energy, to dim our frequency, to dim our aura because all of the things that are surrounding us impact our frequency and reduce that aura down to kind of like that, right? They're just kind of shrinking us down. Of course, everything that I'm trying to talk about with the sun and the energy and all of the essence is bringing us up. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to, that's, a, that's why like each little thing is like I said in the beginning of this live is a checklist. Do different things and check off little things and try new things and see how you feel. Once you implement something new, you will see how you feel by implementing something new. And you'll start to notice that once, for example, you're only in incandescent lights, you're not gonna walk into Target and be like, oh, it's nice in here. You're gonna be like, oh my gosh, these lights are just freaking annoying. Because Target, the one video I put up about their Internet of Things lights, they rolled out their LED lights in 2019, just before 2020 with the nonsense so that they could track and trace every person who walks into that store and analyze their phone while they're shopping which think about it, think of when all the things were running out and there were so all these things that were out of stock at that time, they were getting all the data and they were monitoring all the people and they were putting all these little things in Target and everything else and those lights are also emitting radiation at the same time. So not only are they flickering, but they're re emitting radiation. So when you're bringing those incandescent bulbs into the house, you know they can definitely play an impact on our health. So kind of went off topic and hit a little bit on uh, the electric culture and then I guess the last one I should kind of hit on which relating to frequency is with religious buildings, right? So we talked about the birds, we talked about dogs, we talked about insects, we've talked about even fish, fish, they swim in a school, they pick up on the frequency. So now we go with religious buildings. Why do religious buildings always face to the east, right? Because the highest magnetism is always to the west. So when you walk into the, for example, the, the altar or wherever you're going into, the places to the west actually have the highest frequency. And then also too as well, all of those buildings are placed on ley lines which run water underneath them. And me and a buddy who he was in here, I don't know if he's still in here, but we were talking about it. That's the whole point of, for example, holy water is because when they're giving you holy water or any type of water in the religious building, it's primary water. They're giving you live structured water because of the frequency that's coming up from beneath it. And they build these buildings on the ley lines because they know the frequency that's coming up and they face them to the east, right? So they face the buildings to the east because that's where the weakest magnetic frequency is so that when the people come in and they set up and they look to the west and they sit to the west, 
they're in the highest healing frequency. And also because of the materials of the stones and everything that everything is built out of with whatever, with which, whatever religious building it is, the, it amplifies the energy. Right? So for example, you see like there's sometimes there's little glass windows and then there's some stone. The stone sitting on top of the glass or the crystals, because that's what they are, is creating that piezoelectric field, which is amplifying the energy in that area. So it's fascinating because when you look at this, it's right back to frequency again. And also with relating to electroculture, they noticed that plants that grew, basically if you put a little, uh, little tower in the middle of like a copper tower, all the plants on the north, the south, and the west all grew the largest, while all the east actually grew the smallest, and they didn't grow that much. So it's interesting. So something of the east is the lowest magnetism, but it's just not told to us. So when we walk into these buildings or structures or you do a tour, whatever it is, you don't realize you're walking into an orgone healing chamber that's basically producing negative ions and going to heal you. And that's what Wilhelm Reich was doing, and they put him in jail because his devices that he was creating, which were basically like blocks in which you would walk in, kind of like a closet, and you would sit in there, that would create negative ions, and the person would be healed in 15 minutes. Now, if you look up Dr. Sam's work with the Bosnian pyramids, guess what he discovered? When people go into the underground tunnels underneath the pyramids, they are bringing in negative ions into their body, and it causes their body to heal. If they have blood pressure issues, if they have blood sugar issues, if they have you know coughing and they can't breathe, whatever it may be, they begin to heal because they are around the negative ions. So these religious buildings over here too as well also are producing negative ions, which causes a person to be healed. So it's kind of like every single time somebody goes to prayer, they're sitting in an orgone energy chamber that's pretty much producing energy and healing them because of the frequency because the people who were building those buildings they understood the frequencies of the earth and put them on magnetic ley lines so that when they built it right on that spot it would resonate that frequency up you would walk into it your cells would start to spin back the opposite direction and they'd begin to heal so that's kind of what that is so the stone churches with stained glass really are healing chambers yes so that's basically what it is and yeah, somebody just said, Michelle, as well, chanting was done and in those places as well, too, right? When you would chant, you would resonate at a certain frequency, which would allow that frequency to start healing your cells. And when you chant, you're coming through your heart and your throat chakra and through the penile gland and into the crown. So you're energizing this whole line that's down through here and then also into the stomach as well, too. Can you change your energy and frequency with mantras on your own system if you don't want to go to church? Yes, of course. So that's basically what I was talking about. It's basically you could heal with meditation and chanting. You can go out into nature. You can take your shoes off and put your feet into the ground with no devices around you whatsoever. And you can do different types of meditation practices. And now let's think about this. When you go through yoga, right, what are you doing? So let's say I put my arms up and I'm doing a yoga pose. I'm actually creating my body to be an antenna onto the earth. So when you go through yoga poses and you're going through breathing motions and you're going through these different things, you're actually basically harnessing the earth's energy and turning your body into an antenna. And that's how, if we're gonna take it a step further, that's how they used to levitate, right? Remember back in the day, they would have people, they were like monks that would levitate. They'd go into a place and they'd be able to levitate off the ground. Reason being is because the area in which they were in, the temple that they were in was very magnetic at the time. And what they would do is they would go through so much breath work right? And they would turn themselves into a non-magnetic being. That's the best way to describe it. And because it became non-magnetic, because they were in a magnetic room, they would actually be able to start to lift themselves up and they would be able to float. So the whole thing with levitation is basically you can go through different types of breath work or yoga movements and you can actually cause your body to levitate because you're basically getting rid of the magnetism that's pulling you down, right? It's kind of what we're all around. It's just magnets. There's magnets all over the earth. Magnets are causing all different types of things. Magnetic structures, vortexes, energy, right? Sedona, all those things. So you can actually use breath work to levitate yourself up. Last one. Let me see what I got right here. So we got curious on the red light and saunas as well. So anytime you're doing red light, you want to make sure it's an infrared bulb. Um, this It's a very tricky one because there's only a one, I think it's called Therabulb. And that's the only one I've seen that's an infrared bulb. But if you're going with that, those are also healing frequencies. The red rays are very healing. Now, if you wanna go another alternative way, you can take red sunglasses and just wear them, 
right? Because red is gonna give you that same frequency as well too. So, you know, you can do different types of things. You don't have to just do, for, for example, specifically a sauna, right? You can just go out in the sun and then you could have some say red glasses and that can do it as well too. But you just want the red color. Back in the day, they actually, there's a book I found, someone's going to Sedona, that's awesome. Sedona's the best. But um, what you call it? So there's a book I found that actually talked about the window panes. So what they would do was, uh, this was like 1500s, 1555 or something, 1550, whatever it was. They would take window panes and they would put blue window panes in the in the window, and then they would take red ones and put them in the window. And they would have like the royals basically sit in them. And what they noticed was was if they put blue window panes in the window, the royal would get like crazy. They would get nuts. They would get psychotic. If they put red window panes in the window, they would actually start to heal. They would start to feel better. They would sleep better. So you can do things like that too. You could get a big piece of red plastic and you could even just put it over the window. And that's just a simple DIY of getting that red light therapy that you want. And you'd be using the sun, which is free. And you can just sit right in front of the window because you're getting the same red frequency. So there's all different types of way because it's just the color, right? It's just the color spectrum that causes the healing. So you can do that as well too. So that's just another one. Let's see what we got all the time. Interesting, I do feel like magnets are pulling me down. That's what's doing it. It's just a bunch of magnetic frequencies. And that's why like, for example, someone said they're going to Sedona, which, you know, with Sedona, we got the copper. But um, with Sedona, right, it's all iron. There's tons and tons of iron in the soil and that iron is creating magnetism and Sedona is right next to a volcano, even though they don't actually talk about that, but it's right next to a volcano and that iron is in the soil and it creates all that magnetism and that vortex that's in Sedona. So when you're walking into it, you're pretty much just in one big magnetic or magnetite, whatever you want to call it, um, area. And that's what's causing it to feel like you're in a submarine, right? You almost feel like you're in a submarine when you go to Sedona because of the energy that's basically being harnessed off the earth. And that's what you're feeling. So that's why it's such a beautiful magnetic place that's also connected up to Mount Shasta. That's where it's actually a perfect line to. Does the window block out the frequency as well? Well, you're still getting the sun. So it's, I mean, you're, it's not gonna be perfect with the window. So if you want, you could open up your window and have the screen, right? So if you wanted, you could open up the window, have the screen, and then you could put a red piece, like literally just a red piece of plastic on top of that and you would get that through the screen and then you can get the natural sun rays like that. There's all different ways. I, the reason I say that is because no way is perfect, but there's always different ways to heal the body. And I try to give just every example possible and simple examples so that they don't cost uh, very like a lot of money because I realize a lot of the stuff is very, very simple and it shouldn't cost millions and millions and millions of dollars. They sell red saran wrap. That could work, actually. You would laugh. That actually, because it's the red, it's the red, red hue and red frequency that comes off of it. So, you know, that's the thing is like when we start to understand colors and metals and crystals and frequency and all of these things, you know, you start to understand that, you know, so even colors that I'm wearing, right? Depending on the color that you decide to wear for your shirt and whatever it may be, this color will emit a frequency to you guys as I'm talking as well, too, but also for yourself, right? So, like if you're feeling low energy, you might wear a lot of blue to actually increase your energy, right? If you're feeling over, like over, overly, let's say, um, overly energetic, you might wear a red or like a pink or a color like that to kind of dim your energy and calm you down a little bit. So it's just, it's very, very fascinating when you get into colors and there's a book I'm going to read soon on that, but it's, um, all about color spectrum, color therapy, and all of the healing parts of that. But it's all stuff we just have forgotten. This is what they used to do. They used to study these things. And that's why even when you take certain plants and you put plants next to certain plants, their colors and their frequencies all emit to each other, but we just can't see it. Went to it on general. And she said, that's good, but you actually need to hug a tree. That's true. Because that tree is one big gigantic antenna that's emitting frequencies all the time. And you're basically hugging it. So you're basically locking in and connecting and connecting with that tree so that you're getting that information. There's information emitting from those trees. And you're also connecting into the roots of the earth because however tall the tree is, also go the roots farther into the earth as well too. That's why hugging some of the old ancient trees that are like hundreds, right? Like a hundred feet tall. Or if you ever see like a really big tree, like something that's like four times the size of your body, those are the trees that you want to hug because those trees possess a lot of information and a lot of downloads, right? A lot of information and they also ground you instantaneously because their roots are going so deep. 
How do you feel about biocharging? I've heard about that. That sounds really f- interesting. I think I know what you're talking about, but if, I, if, if, if it's like a charger pad, but I, I'm not sure. Earthing makes good ground and mats. Yep. So earthing is great. I did that at the Cummers camp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's the thing is these are just simple things. You can go out into a forest and just hug some trees and you will start to feel better. Your brain will start to work better. Because what happens is when we're in these boxes, right? Because that's what these are. When we're in these boxes, there's no negative ions around us. There's only positive ions. That's why like even right now I have the window closed and there's no pos- there's no negative ions coming inside. But there's only positive ions in here. So when you're going into, so for example, hug a tree or touch the dirt, you're getting all those beautiful negative ions that the tree is emitting. And then you're also connecting back with ancient lineages because trees have so much ancient information, just like water, right? There's all types of information and in memory in water, just like there's all types of information and in memory in trees. So it all goes hand in hand. So today we talked about a little bit of everything and I will save this live and I will put it up on Rumble and I will put it up on YouTube. If you guys have any questions about, like I said, any of my product or any of our products, anything about what I talked about today as well too, just let me know. You can send me a message, but I think we're at the end of our time and I will see you guys next Monday. We'll do a Q and A if you guys have any questions and we'll pick different topics. This one, I just want to do a lot with electroculture because I had a lot of messages about it and I thought that a lot of people wanted to hear for that one, but I'm happy we dabbled on a couple different ones as well too. And I hope you guys have a great, beautiful rest of the week. And like I said, just go out there and explore, be in nature, understand that, you know, it's all around us and there are easy solutions in which we can do and start growing something, right? Start growing just one little thing, grow a a basil plant, a mint plant, just something, whatever it may be. And understand that you can connect to that and that plant will vibrate at a frequency to heal you and also provide you with more nutrients, right? That's the other thing because it's just simple things that we can do. And these are all simple solutions. So I wish you guys the best. If you guys have any more questions, just send me a, any, uh, send me a message. And I wish you guys all love and a great week.